Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath again. Um, so today we're going to be looking at chapter 2. Proverbs chapter 2. And we are going to... Whoa. That actually, that chapter 1 actually has 22, 22, 22 chapters. So we're going to go maybe, I don't know, three steps or two, God willing. But let's actually get in as we move on. And don't forget to actually click that subscribe button on your way in. Let's get into it. Okay, chapter two, the benefits of wisdom. Well, we know God actually said, my people are dying for lack of knowledge or lack of wisdom. So when you don't know, why you don't know, you don't know. And sometimes because you don't know, you don't make good choices. So that's... Let's see. Verse number one. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, with thee. So basically, that's pretty self-explanatory. So that thou incline thy ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding, meaning when you receive God's word, okay, so you can receive God's word and then not actually apply anything in your life. It's like when you study, let's say, Python, R, SQL, and all you did was your class homework, but outside of class, you never practice to become better. Same thing here. You can receive the, you can pass the class and then still not understand anything. I'm, I've, I've take, I'm pretty sure most of us have taken courses. We pass the class, but we're like, what did I learn in that class? Basically, um, and so when you when you receive God's word and you hide His commandment with thee. When you hide God's commandment, God's commandment within you, it simply means you take your time to study, to understand, and to live by the commandments. Basically, that means you incline your ear onto well, your ear onto wisdom, and you apply thine heart to understanding. So you try to understand the commandments that God has given. Basically, yea, if thou criest after knowledge, meaning. So, Christ doesn't mean you're crying. It means you're going after, you're searching, right? That's actually the... Yeah, to call, to proclaim, to read. You're basically going after something, okay? And liftest up thy voice for understanding. Liftest, to lift, right? It means to give, to put, to set. So, you set your voice to for understanding you you go after knowledge and you basically set your voice set your mind your heart to understand wisdom if thou seekest her as a silver as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasure remember in chapter one god said they will seek me but they will not find me those are the people that were not interested in looking for God. But God is saying, basically, if you seek me, if you seek knowledge, seek wisdom, seek understanding, as you are seeking for silver, we know how precious silver is, actually. It is precious because in most of the Olympic games and all that, we have three medals, gold, bronze, silver. Do you remember? No, it's gold, silver, bronze. Bronze comes third, right? Yeah. And that's how that's how that's how high silver is in the Olympics game. Gold is number one, silver number two, and bronze number three. Um, funny thing is, if you look at Daniel chapter 2, the dream of Nebuchadnezzar, Bible was the Nebuchadnezzar saw a head of gold, chest and arms of silver, thighs of bronze, leg of iron, 
interesting. Our silver, that's how high silver is. And you search wisdom, understanding, as you tre- as you searching for hid treasures. Uh, I had the privilege some days to meet, sometime in the past, to have to hang out with some people that were doing geocaching, something like that. I forgot the name. And we had to look for treasures. Man, that was actually good times by then. Then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. This is how you find God. Interesting. You have to be looking into it. You can't just... That's why when people say, well, I read the Bible from cover to cover. Yeah, okay, so what? The devil knows the Bible by heart. And just reading the Bible from cover to cover does not mean anything. Anybody can read the Bible from cover, from cover to cover. I have done it as well. One time. And I said, that's it. Meaning, I've always studied the Bible since I was a little baby. But I decided, you know, I want to actually read it from cover to cover. It does help in some cases. But if you don't study, you're not going to know anything that God is trying to teach you. So that's how you find God, the fear of the Lord, meaning which is beginning of wisdom. For the Lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth, Oh, for the, Lord, for the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Interesting. People that say that the that God doesn't exist basically means, in the sense, knowledge doesn't exist, doesn't exist, understanding doesn't exist, because for us to have a moral compass to know what is right and wrong. There has to be a way, a place to find it. Now, whether you don't believe in the God of heaven that made heaven and earth, or you believe in the Big Bang, if you believe in the Big Bang, then that's your God. No, for sure, it's not going to save you in the future. You know, you know, if, you if you don't know any better, maybe. But if you don't believe in, if you believe in evolution or all that thing, and that's your God. Now, somehow, you can talk about God doesn't exist. If God doesn't exist, then whatever you actually think is your God, it doesn't exist either. Meaning, if it doesn't exist, you cannot exist either. Because if He is a higher power than you, then you shouldn't exist. The only way you can exist is if it, that God that you serve actually exists. So, when people say that, oh, um, that's that's why God says, um, Psalm chapter fourteen, verse number one: "The fool have said, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God." Why is he called a fool? Why? God gives wisdom. You cannot have wisdom if God doesn't exist. Now, like I said again, if you don't believe in my God, you, whatever your God is is higher than you. Because if it is your God, that means you worship that God. So, fools have no knowledge. Why? Because God gives knowledge. In a sense. Man, interesting. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk, that walk uprightly. So in a sense, God is basically saying, hey, you want wisdom? Come to me. You want to be upright? Come to me. Because I have all of that. I can give without any um, drain, drainage. It's always filled with wisdom and righteousness. He keepeth the path of judgment and preserveth the way of his sense, of his sense. Interesting. Everybody likes to read or to recite Psalms twenty-three, right? I know it in French, so I'm not gonna say it in English because I don't know it in English. I know it in French. 
But you actually see that how God actually takes his people and put them into the green pasture. Okay? He preserved the way of his saints. Meaning, yes, though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, guess what? I will be, I will have no fear. Why? Because the Lord is with me. What? God is preserving the way of his saints. Even when you have to go through the valley of the shadow of death, God still preserves the way of his saints. They're not going to stumble. They're not going left and right. They're going to go on a straight path. or well, not a straight path, but they're going to be on the path. It might be a narrow path. As thin as the thinnest line. But guess what? They are not going to stumble. They're going to walk on it. God keeps the path of judgment. Why judgment? Because you cannot have knowledge. You cannot have judgment without knowledge. You have to know what you're talking about, what you're doing to judge something, whether it's good or bad. You can be ignorant and then passing judgment. It makes no sense. You're going to be a bad, horrible judge. Actually, if you have any judge that does something wrong, that person shouldn't be your judge. At least in that category. God keeps the path of judgment because we know in Ecclesiastic, Ec, 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 um, Song of Solomon, chapter 12, Bible actually says, in the last days, God will call oops, God will call everything into judgment, whether it be good or evil. So in a way, God will show everyone that he knows everything, whether it's good or evil. That's why he, God can keep the path of judgment. He's not ignorant. He knows everything that is, that is, that is done in a good way or in a um, bad way. Then shall thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity, yea, every good path. Like I just said, I didn't even see that part yet. When you understand knowledge, guess what? Then you can understand righteousness. Because when you have knowledge, wisdom, understanding, you will know what is right, what is wrong, how to live good or to live bad. And as a matter, as a, as a, as a, a way to, to look at it, you should keep the good path. Once you understand, once you have understanding, wisdom, knowledge, you can then understand righteousness. What is what it, what it means to be righteous? You can understand what it, what it means to have judgment, good judgment, to have equity. Not doing something under under the guise being deceitful. That's not equity. If you're not doing anything with equity, you are being deceitful, mischievous. When you... Ooh. But of course, people may have knowledge and wisdom and understanding and still choose to do the wrong thing. Let God deal with them. That's your problem. Focus on you. But... Uh, verse number 10. I think we're going to stop in, the, in that one. We're going to continue next week for verse number 11 through verse number 22 but yes guys so you have to be able to understand to understand righteousness judgment equity you have to know you cannot be ignorant and and, and then think you're gonna be doing things righteously with good judgment and equity that's a recipe for failure. And God asks us to come to him because he gives wisdom and knowledge. Once you come to God, you can actually see and do what is right. It was again, 
the open world TV. Food for thought.